I'd like to warmly welcome you to this high level round table colloquium on the theme democracy governance and pan African idea with Africa organized in the honor of a notable pan African civil activist the late Dr. Tajuddin Rahim most of you remember vividly and so well the early hours of the morning paradoxically on Africa Liberation Day the 25th of May 2009 we got the terrible news that one of the leading proponents of Africa's liberation Tayuddin Abdurrahim was tragically lost in a senseless car accident but I think his departure on Africa Liberation Day talks a lot about this. Tayuldin led Justice Africa work with the African Union since its early days. He combined this with his role as a General Secretary to the Pan-African Movement, Chairperson of the Center for Democracy and Development, and the Pan-African Development Education and Advocacy Program. Tayuldin, we've known him as a fighter in the struggle to get the UN Millennium Development Campaign to support meaningful programs. I would like to think there was hardly a Pan-African initiative that took place without Tayuddin. Unique presence, support, humor, and above all, political perspective. Tayuddin departure left a massive hole in all of us, in all of our lives. But if his life is to mean anything, we must follow his call in the signature line of his every email where he was saying, don't agonize, organize. It's part of our honor to Tajuddin, for some of us as a comrade, as a brother, and as a fighter of a Pan -African, of, for Pan-Africanism, we are organizing this high-level colloquium. I'd like to thank you all for making you time to be part of this important event. We take pride in the fact that we have the Pan-African, the, the Africa Peer Review Mechanism. 30 countries are now members of it. Uh, reviews are taking place. And um, I'm sure that um, in, in no time, almost every, every African country will also become, will become members and participate in this review mechanism. We also have other initiatives like the the African Charter on Democracy, Elections and Governance. The African Union recently, as one of its pillars, you know, introduced shared values, you know, which really is it was courageous. And the discussions with you in the hall will show you how committed Africa is to really putting in place authentic democratic systems. But this is, to my mind, the glass half full. This is there, this reality. We, we're talking about it, uh, and I, what I thought this colloquium would then do is, what is the reality on the ground? Despite all these things that we say we are putting in place, what is happening in Africa? I don't see a meaningful, sustained implementation of the recommendations of the review. And really, again, I, I stand corrected on this, if I have not done uh, a detailed study, but that's the impression I have. So how we could now give added push and momentum to this, to this mechanism to really live up to the expectations of not only Africans, but people who love Africa are expecting from the peer review. Okay. So I hope we'll have a chance to, to look at them. We have to, we have to look at elections. What, how, how do we make elections credible? How do we make elections you know, rig free. What we do in, inter, in regional integration and bringing must be regarded as a key component of the Pan-Africanist idea. We must debate the type of, the idea of Pan-Africanism, the type of institutions that we create to drive this. And we make the Af average African the participant in this and that things are not imposed upon them. And I, I, I don't see enough debate on this. 
we try to fuel this debate. We produce a report annually on this. So we hope that, again, you would, this is something you would, you would look at and come up with, um, with recommendations. Why this roundtable? Why this colloquium? Why did we choose to put this in place? And, and what is different um, between this and other meetings that we hold? For us in GPAD, this roundtable series is what we call the track two platform of policy discourse. The track one platform is, a plat is our normal platform, the, the formal platform, where we produce reports, we produce technical papers, we have expert meetings, we invite member states. That's the track one, which is completely formalized. The track two platform is an informal platform to provide a basis of dialogue, debate, discussion on topical issues of governance on the African continent. And why did we choose to do this? We decided to do this simply because we discovered that within official platforms and official frameworks, people are usually constrained. Sometimes they say exactly the opposite of what they mean when they are in official platforms. And we thought there's need for us to put off the official platform, allow people to speak their minds openly, unencumbered by any officialdom. And that's why we decided to put in place this roundtable series. There's, there's no better theme that we can pick than the theme of democracy, governance, and the Pan-African idea. Where is Africa? In the 60s, there was a lot of optimism about the future of this continent. Of course, this continent has made progress, but there are also challenges. And the basic question for us in, in GPAD was, have we kept faith with those ideas and ideals of Pan-Africanism that fired political liberation and independence on the African continent? What journey have we taken so far? What missteps have we made? And what does the way look in terms of the road ahead for this continent. Let, let me just say a word on Taju. I will not talk about Taju's Pan-Africanist credentials. I will talk about the softest thing, and perhaps the strongest. And, and Taju's concern for women's liberation on the African continent. That's a part of Taju which many people have never talked about. The phrase, no woman should die giving life, was a phrase from Taju Din Abdurrahim. No woman should die given life. And Taju also noted that every day should be a woman's day. We should not just give women on the 8th of March or whatever date. We should give women every day of our lives. I think with this, coming here to celebrate Taju is perhaps the least that we can do for a Pan-Africanist who move on the, in the length and breadth of this continent, mobilizing people for the future of this continent. The Pan-African idea was always about dignity, but dignity in the 21st century must be qualitatively different from the ideas of dignity at the time of enslavement, the time of civil rights, the time of apartheid, the time of fighting for freedom. And yet, even while we're talking about the 21st century and democracy, Tajuddin has always told us that we must take Pan-Africanism from the boardroom, from the places of conferences, and must begin to see Pan-Africanism from the street. Tajuddin has left with, for us a body of ideas around which we can think, we can plan, we can organize of how to go forward in the 21st century. So the ideas of Pan-Africanism in the 21st century must deal with the fact that we're dealing with a multifaceted question of transformation. It's no longer about political power, about great leaders, it's about um, this conference. It's how do we transform all the relationship that involved us as human beings in the 21st century. Reconstruction of Africa must be based on not only the repair of Africa, but also the unity of the African peoples. And so the democracy that we are talking about in the Pan-African movement 
must be a democracy that fulfills our deepest ambition to be human beings. Clearly, elections and parliaments and multipartism are minimum requirements, but clearly those have not been sufficient because all over Africa we have found that political leaders who are militarists can reorganize constitutions and institutions to put themselves in power. So democracy must go beyond the liberal paradigm of democracy. The democracy that we're talking about is not only voting, but is also the right to breathe. We cannot talk about voting and elections when people do not have clean running water. And for the past 20 years, I've been saying one of the most democratic questions in Africa is the right to clean running water. The crisis of 21st century Pan-Africanism, democracy, and the ideas mean that the ideas themselves must come to grips with the changes in the level of the material conditions and the levels of the changes of science and technology in the 21st century. The Pan-Africanism we are thinking of today must be to regenerate African life. The 21st century challenging us about what will it mean to be a human being in the 21st century. And unless we have an agenda which brings back the life and dignity, then we will become the robots and the heroes of woods and the drawers of water for other people in the 21st century. Thank you very much.